Fellows, my name is John and I am novelizing the first Legend of Zelda game. This project is a fan work of course, it's nothing official and Nintendo holds all the rights to this property. I am simply doing this for fun and professional curiosity. In this series of videos, I want to tell you all about the work and research I have to do in order to carry out this task. And today, I'm talking about the sword. Let's press start. Question. Which kind of bear is best? <laughs> Just kidding. That was a reference from the TV show The Office in case you didn't know. If you did know, I hope that helped your day at least a bit. I do have a serious question though. Here it is. The first sword Link gets in Zelda 1. Is it wooden? Apparently it's not. Sure, the sprites in the freaking screen could very well lead you to think that it is, but if you have the instruction booklet that came with the game, I would urge you to open it on page 19. If you don't have the instruction booklet, don't worry, you can download it. If you don't know what an instruction booklet is, then frankly I am amazed and very thankful that such a young person as you is interested in this video. Heck, I might even go through the trouble of taking a picture of the page with my phone and putting it here, even though I'm adverse to doing the extra work. If I do put it here, then right now is the time to be looking at your screen. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Okay, now that everyone has their booklet open on the same page, look at that first sword. The one in the very left of the three-step progression and tell me, does that look wooden? And not only that. But if you've played Breath of the Wild, you might know that it is possible to get the first sword from the first Zelda game. You can look it up. If you do, look at that breakable weapon <laughs> and tell me, <laughs> does it look wooden? And if you want to go the extra mile, you can boot up the game or even insert your cartridge in your beautiful, magnificent, still functioning NES console and look at the start of the game where it tells you the backstory and then the screen scrolls up to show you all of treasures <laughs> in the game. If you do, look at that brown shaft with a hilt, then look at the text below it and tell me, does it say wooden sword? The answer to all those questions above is a variation of no, no it doesn't. If you already knew this, I'm sorry for spending so much time of the video pointing out the sources I used to determine how I was going to portray the sword in my adaptation of Zelda 1. I'm making a big deal out of this because it honestly blew my mind to dig into this and discover that I'd been mistaken for decades. In the end, I had to face the facts and came to interpret the color of the pixelated blade as maybe the scabbard of the sword Link is given. If you didn't know this, however, and your mind has been blown, and if you're wallowing in denial like I did for a whole day, then let me distract you with the rest of this audio which is really all about how I'm adapting the concept of this magical sword for my novelization of the first Zelda game. The mechanics of the sword are fairly simple. Link is always holding his shield up in front of him and only opens himself up when attacking with the sword. The attack is always a thrust and, if at full health, a short magical beam shoots out of the sword's blade. This beam can damage enemies and shatters an impact with anything. All that is great for a game, but not for pros. To begin with, the concept of full health does not lend itself well to writing. What does it mean? In the game, it means Link's heart meter is full. In a novel, well, if, if Link is grazed by the tip of a moblin spear, does the resulting scratch mean he's not at full health? Does a little, tiny scratch mean the beam doesn't work anymore? When I first tried my hand at adaptations with a fairy tale Snow White, I thought it would be easy. Then I sat at the table of adaptations and ate my own effing words. I, I don't have yet a consensus on whether my adaptations are any good, but I feel they are. And from that, I can tell you that adapting requires much more work than originally estimated. So here's what I ended up doing for this word. There is something very mysterious about the way the story of Zelda 1 is presented. The instruction booklet mentions that there are two Triforces, one of power and one of wisdom. We know from later games that there is also a Triforce of courage, but it is never mentioned in this game. The existence of the Triforce of courage was probably retconned, though I have my doubts. In any case, knowing that there is a third Triforce and that courage is pretty much the essence of what makes Link a hero, I decided to link the sword's magic to his courage. Uh, see what I did there with Link's name? <laughs> Whenever Link is determined and sure of himself, the sword will work its magic. 
If Link is unsure, however, or hesitant or doubtful, if he gives in to fear, then the sword beam won't work. Now, let's talk about that progression, about the sword becoming the white sword, which in turn becomes the magical sword. This equipment upgrade is tied to hearts in the game as well, specifically to the number of heart containers Link possesses. At 3 you get the sword, at 5 you get the white sword, if you find the old man that gives it to you, at 12 hearts another old man gives you the magical sword. I want to handle things a little differently, but keep similarities to the progression in the game. Every time you defeat the boss of a labyrinth, Link is given a heart container that increases his heart meter. In my adaptation, I'm going to tie the sword's upgrade to the number of bosses defeated as well. I'm just going to do away with the concept of heart containers. As I said before, I'm going to make the old men and women living in caves members of the Sheikah clan. We can tie that to the fact that Link gets an eighth of the Triforce of Wisdom whenever he defeats a boss. This way, the old man and woman can measure his metal, his courage, and when he gets enough, they can help him upgrade his sword. Ah yes, I said upgrade, and by that I don't mean they just give him another more powerful sword, no. Even if it is weak, and looks tarnished because the metal of the blade does not look pure, the sword Link is given at the beginning of the game is magical. It follows then that it can be magically altered to become better and transform into a more magical version of itself. All it needs is the courage of its wielder, and a little mystical prodding. So that's how I'm going to handle rework or adapt the concept of the swords in this game. But there's something else I'd like to mention in this video and it has to do with the master sword which shines in its absence from this game. As much as I love many of the Zelda games there are lots of clear indications that not everything about this series was thought out from the beginning. It's a pet peeve of mine and I suspect I'm one of the few people who pays attention to this but I genuinely feel that one of the aspects of great storytelling is consistency. I may be missing something, but as of this day and year, I don't believe any explanation has ever been implemented to tell us why the Master Sword is missing from the game. Even though it's the Blade of Evil Spain and the Sword that Seals the Darkness, its function as the instrument that can defeat Ganon and banish him is relayed to the Silver Arrows in this game. It would be a fun creative exercise to speculate on what happened to it, but it would only be that, speculation. The idea that it can be practically ruined and then fixed cheapens its concept in my eyes. And the same goes for the silver arrows. Where are they in the games in which they don't appear and why don't you need them to defeat Ganon in other instances but are necessary in this one? If there can be more than one weapon to banish Ganon, then why aren't there more? Was the Master Sword completely destroyed but its power transferred to the silver arrows? I honestly couldn't tell you. Thankfully, it's not my job to do so. All I can do is take what I'm given and produce the best I can with it. What I can tell you is that you can read my adaptation by checking the links in this video's description and that Navi seems to be nagging you. If you press the arrow up button to shut her up, she'll ask you to subscribe to this channel. Hopefully this audio was enough to pique your interest. If not, no worries, I still thank you for listening to me. Until you next hear me fellow, may your power be founded by wisdom and courage.